Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a uh, another tutorial in Python using Pygame. So this one is going to be uh, projectile motion. So in one of my previous videos, I showed you guys a game that I made. It was like a mini golf game where it had a ball that could jump around the screen, something like this, right? Now, obviously it was bouncing and it was a little bit more advanced, but it ran off this basic principle of something called projectile motion. Now, if you're not in physics or not in math, projectile motion is just pretty much how a projectile moves in two dimensions, at least the way that we're gonna be doing it, uh, with no air resistance and a constant gravity uh, acceleration and no acceleration in the, uh, in the X direction. So pretty much you can see here, this is what I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do today. Now it seems pretty simple, but it's a lot more advanced than it looks and it deals with some principles that you usually learn in grade 11 and grade 12 and it kind of a prerequisite for this is I'd suggest you're probably in high school and with decent math background so you can kind of understand what's going on. If you don't um, have a good math background or you're not good at math, don't worry. You can still follow along with the tutorial and just copy what I'm showing. Um, but don't stress too much about trying to understand it all if you're uh, if you don't have great math background. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer video as I am going to explain somewhat in depth how all of this works. And then it's probably going to be in about two parts as well. So I'm going to try to keep this first part maybe about 10, 15 minutes and then same for the second part. So let's get started right away. So like I mentioned, we're going to be doing this in uh, Python. So let's open up a new file and we're going to start with our imports. We're going to need to import Pygame. We're going to need to import math. Now we're just going to create a basic Pygame screen. Again, I'm going to go kind of fast for some of these beginner steps uh, or these beginning steps just because it's pretty straightforward. And if you guys don't know how to use Pygame, you might want to go watch my Pygame programming uh, tutorials first as they might help out with this video. So we're just going to set up our screen here and I mean you guys can make it as wide as you want. I'm just going to set mine equal to 1200 by 500 we'll do like that and then we'll, we don't need to set a caption that's fine. So we're going to start by uh, just creating a class. Now this class is just going to be our object which is a ball which can be shot around the screen. I'm just going to call it ball. You guys can call it whatever you want and then we'll start off with our init function like this. And we'll just do self, x, y, and then radius and color. Because it's going to be a ball, so we don't need a width and height. We can just do self.x equals x. Straightforward, self.y equals y, and so on. Alright, now we need our other function here, our draw function. It's going to take two parameters here, self and the window. And then inside here, we're just going to do pygame.draw.circle. I think that's how you spell circle. And then for the circle, uh, if you guys don't know how to draw a circle, pretty much it just takes window uh, color, I believe. So let's do self self.color. And then it takes a position. This is going to be the middle of the circle, the position. So self.x and self.y, like so. And then it takes your radius, so self dot radius. Now this is gonna seem weird, but I'm gonna do uh, minus one for this radius here. Actually, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this, all right? And we're gonna paste it again. Now the reason I'm doing this is so that we can get an outline for our circle. So for this uh, next one, we're gonna do radius minus one. So this means it's gonna draw uh, one fewer so that we, it looks like we have a one pixel outline and I'm just gonna set this equal to black, uh, hard coded in here. So this way we start by drawing a black circle and then on top of it, we draw a white circle with one less of the radius so that we see that black outline. And you guys will see what I'm talking about when we're moving the ball around on the screen. Now, we're gonna put in a function here that we're gonna start working on a little bit later. We're just gonna call it ball path. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you call it, but that's what I like to call it. And we're just going to put the parameters in and then we'll we'll come back to it in a bit. So just fill this in for now. Power, angle, and time. And some of you guys in physics might see what we're going to be doing with this function. Um, we're just going to leave it for right now. And we're going to make it a static, uh, a static method as well. Sorry, not function, method. 
inside here. We can also just write pass. Okay, now I know I'm whizzing through this right now, uh, but this is just because this stuff is pretty basic and this is just setting up our screen and setting up everything, uh, which I don't really need to go over in depth. I hope you guys know that already. So redraw window and then we'll just do win.fill and I guess we'll, we'll give it like a nice gray background here. Um, I mean, you can make it whatever you want. And then we're going to just do high game dot display dot update. And we'll include the rest of our stuff in there after. So now let's, uh, let's get into our, our main loop here and our, uh, global variables. So we'll just do run equals false while run. Oops. What am I saying? Run equals true while run. And then we'll do our main event loop. So for event and pi game dot event dot get. And then if event dot type equals equals pi game dot quit. And you guys know what to do here. We're just going to do run equals false. And then outside of our loop, we'll do pi game dot quit like so. All right. So let's take a quick breather here for a second and go over what we've done right now. So we've just created a class, which is our ball object or well, not object ball class. And then we've created our redraw window function, which we're going to use to redraw the window. So we'll put that into our main loop here. And we're going to call that every frame. And then we've created a, uh, just the event loop in here just to see if we quit, then it's going to quit. So now what we need to do is we need to create our uh, global variables and we're going to have to create one called well it's gonna have to be the ball object so i'm gonna call mine golf ball you can call yours whatever you want and we're gonna set equal to a ball object i'm gonna put mine at 300 and then 494 um don't ask why it's that number I'll, I'll tell you guys in a second and then the color will be 255 255 255 so five's our radius this is our y and this is our x all right so now we have our golf ball object so now we can go back into redraw window and we can just do golf ball dot draw and we'll put win in there and we're almost ready to go here. So I'll just show you if I run the program right now, everything should be working. You can see we have a little white golf ball and it's on the screen. Now, obviously it's not moving around yet, but that's what we've accomplished so far. All right. So now we're going to go into the next step. So now that we have the golf ball drawn and we've got through all of the tedious stuff, we now need to figure out some of the math that we're going to be using to well propel the golf ball. So we now need to figure out also when we are going to propel the golf ball. So the way that I like to do it is I just like to have a line between my mouse and the golf ball. And then that line is going to indicate what the angle we're shooting at and the amount of power that we're using. Now this, uh, doesn't work perfectly because it's kind of exponential. The longer the line gets exponentially the amount of power, but for our purposes, it works fine. So I'm going to create a variable out here. Actually, we'll create it in here which is going to be set equal to line. We're going to set it equal to a list and we're going to do two positions in here like this. Now the first position is going to be where our ball is. So we're going to do ball or golf ball, golf ball dot X and golf ball dot Y like that. And then the next position is going to be the position of our cursor on the screen. So to get that position, we actually have to do pause is equal to pie game dot mouse dot get underscore pause like so. And then in here, we can just simply put pause. Now what's going to happen here is we're now going to create a list and it's just going to have, it's going to have that line going between the ball and our cursor. And this way we can decide where we're going to be shooting it and we can just see it better. Now that we have the line, we need to draw the line. So to draw the line, we have to go back into our redraw window function where it's going to do pi game dot draw dot line. And then inside here, we're going to start with our window our color, which I guess we're just going to do black in this case. And then we're going to do, we need the two coordinates. So we're going to do line zero like that and line one. And that should be it for the line. And let's try our program again and see what we get. And yes, now we get a line like this. And did I say it to make the line black? Well, I made it white, so that's okay. You guys can make whatever color you want. It doesn't really matter. And you can see it just kind of follows along um, as I move my mouse so we can determine now what angle we're going to be shooting at and the uh, direction of or the power of that shot. So now that we have that done, it's time to get into some of the trickier stuff. So let's start off here 
uh, by setting x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. These are going to be the uh, variables that we use to determine where our ball was shot from. Uh, so once we click the mouse button, which is what we're going to be using to shoot the ball, we're going to store the position of that ball in these variables so that we can then access them after. We're also going to need a variable called time. It's going to set this equal to 0. We're going to need a variable called power. It's going to be set to 0 again. Angle, same thing, 0. And then shot, and this is going to be equal to false. Or we'll do shoot, actually. So now we need to see when we're going to be shooting. So I said if we press the mouse button, you guys can make it space. You can make whatever you want. I'm just going to do if event or event dot mouse button down. Oops. So this just means any mouse button it can be middle mouse button, uh, left mouse button, right mouse button. Then we're going to shoot. So we're just going to shoot is equal to true. Now there's something here we have to do first. We have to say if shoot equals equals false. This means that we're not already shooting because if we do that, then it's going to mess things up if we're already shooting and we try to shoot again. I right. hope that makes sense. When we shoot here, we're now going to have to set our X, Y, time, power, angle. And this is where we get into the more complex stuff. So this part's easy, but just set X equal to golf ball dot X. And then we're going to set our Y equal to golf ball dot Y. So we know where we initially shot from. And now we have to get our power. So we'll actually we'll set time equal to zero here too. And now for our power. So I mentioned that our power was going to be the uh, the distance of that line. So if I you know, set that equal to zero for now, if I run the program, you can see that, well, we have an issue just because I haven't finished it yet. But the longer the line gets, the more power we're going to have. What even was that issue? Mouse button down. There's apparently no... Oh, if event dot type equals equals mouse button down. My bad there, guys. So make sure you fix that mistake. It's just right here. Um, so let's run it again. Make sure that works. Mouse button down is not defined. If event dot type equals equals. All right, just give me a second to figure this one out. Ah, pi game dot mouse button down. That's what we needed. Sorry about that. All right, so let's run it one more time. Hopefully this one. We get it working. There we go. You can see. So if we have the line like this. We're going to shoot with a lot less power. And if we have the line like this, we're going to shoot with more power um, clearly. So how do we do that? Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the length of the line. So I'm not sure if any of you guys remember from grade nine or 10, the uh, length of the line formula. If you don't, don't worry. I'm going to show it to you right now. Pretty much it's the square root. So we need math dot square root of the change in X uh, plus the change in Y. And both of those are squared. So I'm going to just start by doing this just to remind myself. So we're going to square something, we're going to add it, and then we're going to square something else. Now this is where our line function comes in handy, or our line uh, list, sorry. So in our line right here, we have a tuple and then we have another tuple. So we need to find this minus this, right, uh, as a position. So let's start by doing that. We're going to start with the Y here. So we'll just do line and then we're going to do one, one minus line and then zero, one like that. So the reason we've done this is because our first position is the starting position of our line and where the golf ball is. The second position is our mouse. So if our mouse is over here, then we need to pretty much subtract the, uh, the ending position by the starting position to figure out how much we changed in distance. It's not really that big of a deal because our ball is only going to be ever shot from a certain Y level. But if we had our ball elevated or landed on top of something, then this would definitely matter. All right. So now the next part, we need the X. Uh, so we're just going to do line. And then in this case, uh, one zero to access the X minus line. And then zero zero like that all right so we've got that now that's going to be our power but the thing is if we if we do this then you're going to notice we're going to have power going from like say for example the length of this line is 10 and then up here it's 500. Uh, 500 power means we're moving at 500 meters per second which means you won't even be able to see the ball move across the screen because it's going to move so fast so we're going to actually just divide all of this by eight so that we get smaller numbers for our power 
now the next one the angle okay so this is where we get into even more math so the last one with yeah okay it's somewhat difficult uh, the angle we're gonna have to use a, a bit of trig so I already have a function I pre-wrote here 